This is Gen G versus Sandos from the BCT Masters Madrid playoffs. Welcome to Map Select presented by Omen. So we will jump into the pick ban phase. Sentinel's your first ban. Ban Icebox. Ban Icebox? Makes sense. Genji were undefeated on Icebox in the Pacific League, and Icebox has been Sandos' perma ban for most of this year. Your ban? Wait, what? Uh, map number one, percent split. split. Split? This was an odd decision by Gen G because Split is Sandos' most dominant map by far. In Madrid, 13 4 against Loud, 13 8 against KC. In the Americas League, 13 3 against Loud, 13 3 against NRG, 13 3 against La Vietan. At this moment, Sandos might be the best Split team in the world. And yet, Gen G let it through. And a mistake it was not. Genji slaughtered Sandos 13 to 5. This crucial upset would lead to Genji beating Sandos 2 to 1 and kicking Sandos down to the lower bracket. In this video, we're going to break down three key rounds that showcase exactly how Genji countered Sandos on split. If you're watching this video, you're probably a high-minded individual who wants to learn strategies from the best. But why stop there? What if you're able to use data to win more games, just like the pros? Well, our sponsor, Valent Tracker, can help you with that. Right when you enter Agent Select, Valent Tracker will show you all your teammates' stats. Better to know your teammates than to go into your games blind. My favorite feature is a live match tab, which tracks all the live in-game stats of each player in the lobby. This lets me make more informed decisions based on how certain players are performing. Give it a try today. You can download Balan Tracker for free using my link in the description below. A big part of what makes Sandos' split so terrifying is their post plants, especially their A retakes. He can hold on. The Sentinel's retake utility there was perfect. They put pressure over towards ramp, grab a kill. They back off, they dog out through heaven. They have this kill trip to be able to set up at the start too. They then have another paranoia to layer on top of it. As they blast pack into elbow, that catches onto Martin. So many waves of things. But Genji figured out a way to beat it. Genji opened the round with a 1 1 3 default. Well, these guys are a little bit late to the strat, but who knows? Maybe this will throw off Sandos' timings. Genji put up their Viper Wall A main, denying Sandos' info. So Tens responds by Omen smoking A main. Karen Omen smokes male, baking a mid default. Zelsus responds by popping his Viper smoke mid. Munchkin's Viper Orb lineup on B lands. He pops his smoke which threatens a lurk out from two different angles. Luckily for Sentinels, they have two players close B and a trip B main, so a lurk is actually impossible. Munchkin walks up, admiring Split's architecture. They're not gonna be too happy. He puts down his orb and finds the cam he was looking for. Boom, cam broken, he hops away. They got caught by not being able to shoot the traps. It's, it's a little unfortunate, but these things happen. There was a combo of util again thrown towards them, making that a little bit more awkward. He barely misses the trip, but noise is made. At the same time in mid, Lakia skydogs up. Try to take some flights. That's <laughs> not destroyed that. Yeah, Gen, I'm starting to think Sentinels have noise is successfully made mid. Gen G knows that Sentinels like to play full retake on A. So this round, they showed presence B main and mid, hoping to keep Sentinels stacked towards B while the main pack slowly and quietly walk up A. They're not taking the bullets. Look at Meteor though, he's just about to walk in. Sassy might be caught. And Meteor catches Sassy off guard to draw first blood. Genji explodes on the site, and Meteor extends all the way into screens. Be an afterplant. This time, I don't think there's any denial. And Meteor hasn't stopped his push. He's still going forward. A lot of space to take, a position you usually expect, but the big difference to this is Karen. He's also there with a paranoia in hand and it's about to come through. There it is, the step was heard. But luckily, those players are able to round the- Raisinade is baited out. Now Senos won't have that for the retake, but Ten still has his omen blind. To trying to clear that back out, at least in his mind, but the paranoia is kept in the back pocket, now burned up to go towards elbow. Here comes the blast pack from second. Sentinels explode out, turning it into a 4v2. This is not looking good for Gen G. And Zelsus had opened up the rest, leaving Meteor alone, doing so much damage. 
It looks like Munchkin was able to catch an angle, and with the snake bite landed, that's buying a little bit more time. Tens has to run for the hills now. And with no time left to defuse, Gen G take the first gun round of the game. It was looking dire for Gen G when it became a 2v4, but Munchkin put up his Viper Wall, which gave Meteor space on site to stall and survive. Meteor gets a first pick, John QD also dies, but it was actually Munchkin who killed him from A main. Meteor then breaks Tetno's ankles with his dash, but unfortunately Munchkin also threw his Viper Molly on the spike to delay at the same time. Meteor dies, but the Molly prevents Sentinels from defusing for just enough time for Genji to win the round. So from this round, Genji's game plan is revealed. First, get the sight. They prefer to open with a the default, then execute right after. Two, this is the important part, to take deep space like screens to disrupt Senos' retake before it begins. This way, Senos won't be able to comfortably set up and coordinate their retake utility. After that's done, holding the sights will be a whole lot easier, like how Munchkin just did with his Viper Wall and Mollies. Well, this round did get dangerously close. Senos might be thinking that they just got unlucky on this loss, but little do they know what Genji showed here was just the appetizer. Remember, half of Genji weren't even with the team during the execute, now, what will happen if the entirety of Genji are all grouped and all executing on their anti Senos game plan? Genji opened with all five players A. A worked last round, they're going to do it again. But this time, Senos have Cypher A. Now, Cypher and Razor are playing back, meaning Senos' game plan is to actually play retake on A, and Genji have a plan for this. But first, they cannot afford to die to these trips before getting onto site. He's done it individually. Get out of my way! Uh, straight away, Bladestorm popped. The pacey side. Ramp is cleared and Genji did not see a Skyflash A main. Based on their prep, this tells Genji that Senos most likely have Cypher A and are playing full retake. So they Roomba ramp and instantly pivot to an A execute. Towards this A site, Pit already into mid, but straight over the top goes Meteor. He's looking to pressure. A site is Gen G's. Meteor floated from ramp to this box, letting him leap into the skies to dodge all of Cypher's trips as his teammates support him with the Sky Dog, Omen Blind, and Viper Molly. Meteor has site control, but Texture got caught in the trip and got spammed down by John QT. Number in Sentinels' favor, and they're playing full retake. This is perfect for Sentinels, but Genji have a plan and they're sticking to it. Munchkin takes a ramp space and Meteor walks through the smoke into screens. A player on B and one in mid, Genji have a lot of space. You don't expect to see a Sentinels crunch just yet. And look at how much they're keeping in their back pocket for the eventual fight. A paranoia is still to work with almost every piece of utility that the big ones online. One flash just popped by Sassy, but Meteor turns. The blades are used up, and look, they're not finished pushing Lakia. A one for one in screens, but Sassy had to use both his sky flashes. He won't have them for the retake, but the kill on Lakia also gave him sky ult. Will this be a problem for Gen G? Went charging forward, even though his teammate had fallen back a little disjointed from Gen G, but Munchkin capitalizes on the chaos, picks oh! up two, and keeps having control. That's a huge position for them to play with. And now Sentinels even send Sassy back to reclaim it, buying so much time as only John QT's on the site flanked out and distracted by Meteor. The clock is running down. Munchkin late flanks up through heaven and the classic fight's awkward. The knife kill is in, but it's too little too late. And Gen G win yet another round off time. This is only possible because they're disrupting Senos' retake before it even begins, forcing Senos to waste precious utility and retake time. We even saw a knife fight at the end because both teams ran out of bullets. But as John QT swung his knife as the spike ticks beyond saving, he vowed to take revenge to make sure this doesn't happen again. Genji opened with a 2 2 1 default. Remember step 1. They want to hold for pushes first, feel out the map, and then slam the site together. As for Sentinels, they're opening with a 2 2 1 spread. Set for utility holding all of A. Sentinels are playing full retake on A again, but anything could change in the mid round. It all depends on what Genji does on their default. The barriers drop, Munchkin mollies B main, throws his Viper Orb line up B. Then he jiggles for info as a pack of Genji triple post market and Meteor solo holds A. Sentinels realize it's a bit too quiet, so they prepare a play. Munchkin pops his B Orb, 
This is Sandos' cue. On and Sky as well. On Sky, Sky. yeah. Has uh, he been watching many Young Pete? Is that what's happening? It could be. It could be. He's learned. Sandos just fully cleared B main. They begin shifting to mid. But what they didn't know was that Gen G were spectating all that utility. They read that Sandos left B main, so they walk up to retake that space. Like you're saying, but Gen G have already far exceeded expectations. They've got a commanding lead early on, even after a scrappy beginning, even yeah. after denial of the second. B main is Gen G's. They're all here anyways, so they call to execute B. But first, they put up their Viper Wall A to pressure A, which lets Meteor lurk up. Sentinel see the wall, they're calling that Genji could be walking A. So 10's on B, jump peeks for info. That was the start of the end, Tom. I was starting to worry. But here we are, round number eight, and Gen Contact taken. 10 smokes off B main, and Meteor uses this noise to begin walking up ramp. Very recently. They've been doing this a lot. Meteor left in a lurk. He's been able to take quite a lot of space. Now, this is space that's given up. Genji stomp up in market. Sentinels hear this. If Genji take mid, then they might be splitting A. So Zelsus puts up his Viper wall for him to reposition and for John QT to slip onto site. But this wall also gives Meteor space to walk up ramp. At this exact time, Genji begin their mid default. They dog up mid, smoke mail. With only 40 seconds left, we're seeing this late clear into middle. Now, a lot of this was probably off the idea that, okay, we, we could have doubled back through and taken control into heaven. Meteor is making so much noise ramp and breaks John Cutie's cypher cam. All this noise was to distract Sentinels to create time for the rest of the team to regroup A for an A execute. Less than 30 seconds left. Genji are grouped up. Now, Sentinels know that Genji are pushing screens on their A hits. So this round, John QT is anchoring down elbow and Zelsus starts shifting to screens. But it might be too late. Genji begin their execute. Sentinel and Viper. It's never easy to get past this util, but they're beginning to predict it. And now they have to try and clear the players. A good trap by John QT. A little closer, 12 seconds left. And there's still some harassment on the site. John QT drops the spike. Eight seconds left. But players up in heaven surely not able to deny. No nade, nothing to clear them from position. And the fight's going towards Gen G. Gen G locked down ramp control. Sandos just spotted both Lakia and Munchkin ramp. This means Texture, the planter, is on site alone. They called Rush down the lone player on site. But one hit to that outlaw, Tens, one hit to damn near anything. Second close the oh. Tens open binds elbow, but it misses the corner, exactly where Texture was posted from. It's now a 3v1 for Gen G. From Texture, pretty much seals the fate of this one with Tens having two players to drop and Munchkin way ahead of him on that fight. Tens saw Lakia spam from A main, so he peeks pre-aimed A main and did not expect Munchkin to be posted hell. Genji's ramp control this round completely threw a wrench in Sandos' retake. This round brings Genji up 6-2, which will eventually snowball into a 13-5 victory, paving the way for Genji to beat Sandos in this series 2-1.